I'm Gary Parr, co-host with Christine Williams of Fiber Talk, but this isn't Christine. This is my good friend Mary McGuire, who is a very talented needlepoint stitcher, and we're in her home today to learn about her 10 favorite needlepoint stitches. So we're going to go through this thing, and there's going to be some fumbling and scrambling as we move pieces in and out so that you can see different examples, but Mary's going to tell us about her 10 favorite needlepoint stitches why she likes them, and then I'll ask a few dumb guy questions, you know, just just to irritate the situation. So, <laughs> this is Mary right here. Say hi, Mary. Hello, everyone. Yeah, there, see, that was good, yeah. Okay, our first stitch in Mary's 10 favorite stitches, 10 favorite stitches is basket weave, and we're showing this in this piece first, and it's under glass, so sorry about the reflection, but this is one, of, and these are all Mary's pieces, all stitched by Mary and we'll look for errors but we won't find any so here we go all right so here's some some basket weave here so t tell us about basket weave Mary. basket weave stitch is probably one of the most used stitches and one of the most misused stitches it's a very very important stitch and just a little bit of history about needlepoint we know it's done on canvas and as it is woven, there, is, there are horizontal stitches on the top and vertical stitches on the top. The, uh, the foundation stitches, the vertical stitches would be the warp. The horizontal stitches would be the weft. And we ask if that's important, and it is important in basket weave. Basket weave is done on the diagonal, and it gets its name because it has, you know, it forms a basket weaving, a woven look on the back. So let's think about this stitch. As we're going to do it diagonally, we, every time we go up a row, we should have horizontal stitches because we like to go up the steps and down the pole. So when we, it's very important to remember this because it's going to form less distortion on your canvas. It's a very, very um, heavy duty stitch. It's good to use for belts, chair cushions, whatever. But I brought a couple samples here today to share with you. This is a well, piece. Well, you just sort of <clears throat> interject here. And then, mm -hmm. you know, people talk about the tent stitch, mm -hmm. which is in most cases if you're doing a large field is not preferred because it, it will automatically even you almost can't avoid distorting your cameras and so this is why we go to basket weave because it gives that that woven basket on the back side mm -hmm. and that's what keeps your, your canvas square though. you're absolutely yeah. right if if I were to do the tent stitch which goes back and forth and forth and back horizontally or vertically there's a there looks like there's corduroy on the stitch and it's not pleasant to the eye at all right. and it's very important too, Gary to be sure that you are going up the steps and down the pole and I've seen basket weave come in where they maybe went up twice in a row you can tell, you can tell there's a yeah. ridge there yeah. and it just doesn't look a bit good. Yeah. Uh, this is a piece called Casbah and I wanted to share it with everybody today because there's a lot of activity in this piece. But I thought this mustard basket weave really gave a resting point to the eye and let all of the other textured stitches and colors come through. We also have to be very careful, Gary, when we start the basket weave stitch. I'm a big proponent of waist, uh, waist knots. And that is taking a knot on top of the canvas at least the, a length away from the needle. And we leave it on the top. We will either put it horizontally or vertically from our first stitch. We don't want to put it in the path of travel as we're going up or down the diagonal because it's gonna, there'll be a ridge. And we don't want a ridge in our mm -hmm. basket weave, as you might know. So I just thought this was a really nice, uh, just a nice example of the basket weave. Yeah, now interesting on this <clears throat> one, you changed the angle. Yes. To mm -hmm. to uh, play with the with the diamond, the overall mm -hmm. diamond effect. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you went, uh, uh, here, let's better, better example down here. Mm -hmm. You went uh, one way, so you followed the line of the diamond mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on each side which is not that's not always not normally the way basket weave is done it's normally just done one way but 
So this gives that visual effect that, that, that follows the diamond line. There. And I think years ago, this would have been a no-no in basket weave. I would weave. think so. Yeah, you'd have gotten your hand slapped. Right. That. But we've come a long <laughs> way over the years. And because Terry Dryden had us do a perfect diamond here, then, of course, we turned our canvas 90 degrees. And if we were to turn it, then you see that the basket weave is the old basket weave. But mm -hmm. I had to turn my canvas. Yeah. But isn't it neat the way that she has it oh, hugging yeah. the yeah. diamond in there? Yeah, and if you've done a lot of basket weave, doing that little thing right there probably messes with your head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. all right, next one. Okay, the, these are just some, um, I have pips, Gary, that we're going to share today. Do you know what a pip is? Well, I know Gladys Knight. <laughs> Well, well, she is yeah. a pip. Okay. But no, it's the pips. That <laughs> the pips. That's right. Yeah. But this is a, this is a pip is a piece in progress. Okay. And I just wanted to point out the basket weave here, just on this little candy cane Santa. Um, we'll bring, we'll come back to this one because there's another one of my favorite stitches on there. But of course, you can see the basket weave. Um, trying to hold this steady so it'll be in focus for the good people. Sure, there sure. We have it. Yeah. Right. Okay, so basket weave with Jessica's spotted throughout. Exactly. Yeah, we're going to have fun with those, Jessica. Oh, we're, we're going to have a lot of fun right. with those. I find the basket weave to be very relaxing. Uh, one of my mentors, Chadi Alderson, said that in order to become perfect in the basket weave, we should practice it for an hour every day. I've heard that kind of talk. Mm -hmm. It's not good talk. Do you do that? No. No. Okay. Not a chance because I hate basket weave. <laughs> oh, you do? Well, <laughs> I find it to be very relaxing. This little tree, I love Christmas trees and I, I was show the whole tree here. I was in a club and the reason I wanted to share this with your viewers is that these, the, the middle two sections, are done with a silk in basket weave. But look at the top section and the, the top section and the bottom section. Do you see that it's variegated? I've used an yep. over-dyed thread works. So you can see how the basket weave works. And down at the very bottom, I did the same thing. Yeah, it really shows up there. Mm -hmm. Yes. But I think it's important to know that if you're doing the basket weave right, correct, and I'm sure that most of you are, there's, um, there's a reason why we do it, and it's very, very dramatic as a very basic, simple stitch. And we'll be visiting this one again, too. All right. Mm -hmm. Just a little, a little tease as to what other... Um, stitch on there might be one of my favorites. Yes, yeah, so the one thing people will learn about Mary, she's a tree freak. So <laughs> this one is. Um, I just wanted to point this the sun out. This piece I love because I'm from the farm in north central Illinois, and I love quilts. In my next life, I want to be a quilter, so this combines my uh, my love of both things. I don't have time to quilt now, but I used fireworks on this piece. Um, not, I'm not going to use a lot of glitz on here with quilts and the farm, but I thought the sun needed to be a little glitzy. So I did the basket weave there. And just remember, I started by uh, making a knot either di uh, vertically or horizontally. And then when I tied off, I also used, uh, went vertically or horizontally over a few of the, under a few of the threads on the back. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And our last one for the for the basket weave today that I want to share is a piece called Galaxy. Monster. It's a it is a huge piece. And we're gonna look right up here. Right. We're gonna look up at this section. Here, let me let me just show. Okay. Galaxy. Yeah, I, I have the chart. And, and the chart have you is, started it? No. I see. Well, you know it's what? Big. You would love it. Um, I try to do one large piece each year. And I will tell you, Gary, I have students in my classes with Galaxy who have not finished Galaxy because of the basket weave. I don't understand oh it, but they're sitting there with all of these beautiful oh sections done, but they don't want to do the basket weave. Well, that's just kind of mindless stitching. I it mean, is mindless. Yeah. It is. And you can see here that, it. I again, I used an over-dyed thread works, and it just makes for a lovely look. It's it's done in rows, but that's okay. Now, when you you don't try to control uh, the color flow in the overdyes in situations like this, you just 
just stitch it and let it be the way it comes out. You're absolutely right. This would be too big a space, and I am a Libra, so I like to have everything balanced. But oh, is that what that means? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because of the scales being I balanced. Follow, I don't follow the, the, the <laughs> astrology stuff. Yeah, but okay. But this <laughs> this right here, no, I don't try to. Now, there are times, because I'm a Libra, I do try to balance, yeah. and we might find some of that today, but not in something of this size. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's one of my favorite stitches. And remember, Gary, it's a diagonal stitch, lower left over one diagonal to upper right. Right. Yeah. We can see here that uh, unlike the, the first one we looked at, these are all going the same direction. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's what the instructions called for. Yeah. And it gives that, yes. and, you know, people talk about basket weave giving visual relief in mm -hmm. a piece. And you can see how that happens. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But there's a lot going on in this piece, and then there's just this nice, quiet, quiet area right mm -hmm. sitting right up there. I certainly think in pieces like this, the basket weave is important because it does allow a resting point for the eye. And uh, I, whenever I do a painted canvas, I always, always use the basket weave in some area. All right, that's uh, there. We have it. So that's our basket weave that's, tour. That was our first, right, my first tour, favorite. Because my hands aren't tired. Yes. Okay. Now our second stitch is the crisscross Hungarian. Crisscross Hungarian. There's a joke in there somewhere, but I, <laughs> it's not coming to me. Well, the so reason maybe it's, you know the joke. I don't know the joke, oh, but right. I know the reason that it got its name. Oh, well, they're, they're history. Okay, okay, a little history. Have you done the crisscross Hungarian? <laughs> yes, I have, but okay. I, I don't know the history. Okay, um, for those of you who are familiar with the Hungarian stitch, it's a straight stitch that goes over two threads, over four threads, over two threads. Well, someone, whoever it was, developed the crisscross Hungarian, which is done on a uh, diagonal, a true diagonal. So as you look here at this, these yellow stitches, you can see on a diagonal that there's over two, over four, over two. So you do a whole horizontal row and then you come back and go the opposite direction. So we went here, then we came back on this little one right here and what happens with this stitch, there's a, there's a um, intersection that is left vacant. And that's where I think it gets the cross because you can do a little cross stitch in there. And if you'll see in there, do you see I used a little Krynic 4 cross stitch in there? Yep, I see that. And I mean, look at the nice texture and the nice blend of using a cotton or silk thread and then using uh, right. a little Krynic, usually a Krynic 4. I'm getting ready to stitch a snowman's hat and I'm going to use the crisscross Hungarian. It's a very dramatic stitch. So you can see here where I used um, on in Alpine Puzzle the yellow sections always asked for the crisscross Hungarian. But it's it's of course a diagonal now, stitch. Now, when you put the crosses in, the little mm -hmm. were you a, did you have to bring someone in to do the cross stitching for you? You know, Ivana Pfeiffer or somebody, or were you able to handle that? I was able to handle oh, it, okay. and I just right. want that's impressive that you could. I work could. That I out. I do that. I did <laughs> very cute, Gary. I did those on the diagonal. Yep. I went back and forth and forth and back, and yes, I was able to do the little cross stitches in there. I'm impressed with that. Mm -hmm. So okay, so we do we do these things horizontally across the rows mm -hmm. back and, then, and forth and then the nature of the stitch leaves those little open X's mm -hmm. which we could leave open Ooh. no we could if we like the paint like if we had a mm -hmm. painted canvas yes. we'd leave open to bring out the color but in this situation we fill it with an accent so. mm -hmm. this is a charted design yes. so yes I did go ahead and fill it and yes there could be it could be very nice uh, a nice look if you did leave them open at some times but I think it would have to be a painted canvas right, right now guess what I have on this next little piece well I don't know but let's look all right all right okay right here this, oh this is one of her trees one of mary's trees i have some forests sorry about the window behind there but yes we're getting close. All right, okay now, what are we now look, at? look at this crisscross hungarian in the red oh, section I see what you did there look at what happened with that little yep. vacancy 
you can see I put a little beading opportunity. Let's see if I can get a better look. We're course. not going to discuss beads today, but I love to bead because it's another relaxing uh, technique that I do. But look at how fun the little beads yep. worked in there. And of course, I did them on the diagonal. And there was quite a bit of compensating in this one, but you know, you find a place that you can go all the way across and then compensate coming back. But this stitch to me has a lot of possibilities. Uh, I've used it on many different uh, patterns, and I love it. It's one of my other favorites. All right. I like the bead thing. Okay. It works out great. So just remember, Gary, that you can use a bead. You can use a little Krynic cross stitch, um, or you can leave it vacant, or you don't have to use Krynic. You can use anything you want. Yep. An over dyed would be maybe very pretty in that if you did um, a solid, Chris, mm -hmm. the Hungarian, or you could, you know, reverse that. Yep. Yeah, and here's here's an example where you what you fill in may blend in or be an absolute contrast, mm -hmm. like here, mm -hmm. where you you bring out uh, the. Uh, a totally like spots, different yeah. bead. And then that mm -hmm. plays off of the white yes, above. so you yeah. can see there. There's, um, yep. yep. Those there were two red spots on yep. this tree. Right. All right. Okay. Excellent. That is the Hungarian cross. Cr crisscross. 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 Hungarian crisscross. Mm -hmm. He was a singer, I think. Chris was he? Cross. Yes. Crisscross. Okay. I'll remember this song after it doesn't matter anymore. So. That All right. Now the third stitch in our, our little tour of Mary's favorite 10 stitches, or 10 favorite stitches, however you use the language. The Milanese... Pinwheel. Milanese pinwheel. Right. And that's that beast right there. Mm -hmm. And a Milanese stitch is actually, uh, makes a triangle, and that it can be done on the diagonal, or it can be done on the horizontal or vertical. So think about this. If you're gonna do something on the diagonal and then do it again on the uh, horizontal or vertical and you put them together you get a pinwheel yes so look what how neat that is and what kind of a statement it makes on a piece of can canvas or needlepoint this one is done in all the same thread yes. i believe yes that's probably a pearl cotton appears to be mm -hmm, i would say it is this one, I wanted to share this one with you because this one is done with an overdyed, and it's an Amadeus stitch up there. Yes. And so the all those Very different. those eight Amadeus uh, stitches made a pinwheel. Yes. And look at how just how it looks. Of course, it's outlined with a Krynic again. Right, but mm -hmm. very different. From, very different from down here. Now, this unfair question number one: you're on the diagonal, and then you have on the straight, and typically we'll see a little bit of canvas mm -hmm. through through mm -hmm. the straight, and actually it's hidden quite well. But that mm -hmm. helps having the lighter colored thread with what I assume is white canvas mm -hmm. behind it. And it is, and you brought up a very good point, and I'm sure many of you know, if not all of you know, that the coverage is better on the diagonal right. stitches than the straightaways. Right. And um, yes, that's very true. Sometimes we have to add more ply when we do a straight stitch. So in some instances, we might, if we're on doing a straight in this thing, we might add an extra ply mm -hmm. just to get better, mm -hmm. get the coverage, because it would destroy the look if the straight stitches were showing a bunch of canvas mm -hmm. through there. And what I did with this one, I'm a pretty tight stitcher because I've stitched many, many years, but I will maybe try to loosen up my tension a little bit okay, on the straightaways. I was, was going to mm -hmm. ask that because, yeah, you, mm -hmm. you, you do have a tight tension mm -hmm. as a rule. Yes. And it looked like this, this was a little looser on mm -hmm. the straight. Yeah, so uh, just, a, just a little bit more, and that helps, helps it fill in. And that's what I did to compensate so for the look. Trick, good it is trick. a good little trick. And yeah, I, and what a difference between mm -hmm. that and this. Mm -hmm. But then I love how, I can't hold it still, but I love how the designer then brought in the, um, uh, the pearl from the other one mm -hmm. as a surrounding. Mm -hmm. Isn't that and, cool? But that's a whole different texture there. Right. Right, but it is the Milanese, it makes the Milanese pinwheel. Yep, just it's how you fill it. Mm -hmm. So that, so then basically what we're saying is 
the pinwheel is the triangles arranged mm -hmm. thus, mm -hmm. but how you stitch what's in the triangle can vary all over the place. That's right. Depending on what look that's you're right. looking for. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of mm -hmm. neat to have that kind of, of flexibility within a stitch. That's that right. That doesn't happen very often. No, it doesn't. And this, of course, she put the, uh, we have the crinic here over, you know, surrounding each little triangle to yes. define each of the little triangles. Right. You're going to have to point at the piece, Mary, instead of what's on the camera. There we go. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Makes cool a big difference, yes. doesn't it? <laughs> We're sitting here looking at the camera and forgetting that there's a piece behind it. The piece is there. <laughs> but now I want you to uh, bring up okay. probably a wonderful, wonderful teaching piece. Um, and it's called Motif Madness. And this is very exciting right, in this piece. The, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at this thing and I'm going to say Debbie Rowley. It is Debbie yeah, Rowley. Yeah, okay. Good call. You're, uh, you're very it was right. It really tough. It was tough for you. You do a lot of Debbie Rowley's pieces. Okay, so here we have it. But look what she did here, Gary. She did the diagonal yes. Milanese with a different thread yep. than she did the horizontal and vertical Milanese. Mm -hmm. And look at that. Isn't that fabulous? Well, yeah. It, look, it, it adds a, a, a three-dimensionality. Mm -hmm. Can I say three-dimensionality? I don't think I, I can. I don't know. I don't, I've never a heard three that dimensional, word. I don't think that's a, a word. A three-dimensional look. How about there look? You okay. like that, Gear? Christine will use three-dimensionality. She, she will. Okay. Yeah, she'll, she'll try and do that. Okay. But yeah, that now see that Debbie, she's a crafty one. Mm hmm Because there's uh, uh looks like an overdive variegation of silk. Yeah, time. it is. And silk, it must be silk there on it's, the diagonal. It, it's probably silk, but then look up here. Look up there on that one. Do you know what thread that is? Well, no, I don't. Neon rays. Oh, my favorite. Your fave. Oh, I, I live for neon rays. <laughs> <laughs> People yeah. are going to start to believe you if you say that. Yeah, well, I'm lying. I know you yeah. are. Okay. I knew that, but I don't know if your audience <laughs> knows that. Yeah, they do. They do. Okay, look what happens with neon rays. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it was hard to lay that. Um, are you familiar that when uh, we uh, use neon rays, we want to make sure it lays flat on the front? And have you ever had the time where you couldn't get it to lay flat? Yeah, because it twisted on the it back. It twisted yeah. on the back. It is almost as important to, our work is almost as important on the back as it is in the front. Yeah, that's something I learned from you because I, I do not like this thread. Mm -hmm. But if, if you are careful with what you do on the back, it will come out better on the front. Yeah. And if, if you can sometimes, some nights it'll lay so nicely and you think, well, what's going on? And if you look on the back, it's not twisted there yeah. anywhere as much. So these are just, um, I wanted to point these out to you to, to show you and your followers that two different threads can be used or two yep. different colors of the same thread for the very same, for a different, totally different effect. Right. Yeah, it gives a three-dimensionality to mm -hmm. it. I think, I think oh, that, uh, uh, we're gonna call that a Christine term, a okay. three-dimensionality. Good, good, yeah. good. Right. So yeah, yeah, this is, I mean, these were really neat. I gotta get this chart. What's this chart? This chart is Motif Madness. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'd like to do it again in Christmas colors. And oh, we're yeah. going to be talking about this piece a couple more times, Gary. So okay. this is a wonderful, wonderful teaching piece. So I can drool over it again here. Yes, you up. can. Right. Yes, we'll, we'll be showing it to uh, the audience again. Okay, I need another Debbie Raleigh chart that I haven't chart st stitched yet. So this okay. Be it. Yes. Now, what do we have? Oh, my. Oh, my. This is gigantic. This is huge. This is called the Glen Eagle, and this was designed by the late Gene Hilton. And <clears throat> Gene... You dated him in high school, right, Glen Eagle? Glen Eagle, yeah. yeah. yeah uh -huh. I thought I'd and I kind of lost track of him now yeah. over the years. Happens. He didn't yeah. come to the reunion, what can I say? Well, there you go. So I don't know. I don't know. Right, it does right. happen. Where, where is the Milanese? <clears throat> but here? look oh, right there, Gary. Oh, there it is, right mm -hmm. there. Here, let me get a little more light to it. Here, okay. Gene revolutionized the stitch, the needlepoint world. She used threads and manipulated them such that I'm sure our ancestors who did the pillows that were um, stitched in the center and all they did was the basket weave, mm -hmm. they would have been shocked to <laughs> have seen this, these stitches. But do you see how the play of light works yep. on the diagonal and the yep. straight stitches? 
I do. Mm -hmm. Now it's two different threads again. Yes, in, it in is. The pinwheel. Mm -hmm. And then again, the basket weave is helping that helping that step out. Uh huh. And, right. and helping the surrounding stitches mm -hmm. stand out too. Exactly. Yep. A nice little background, nice quiet background. Mm -hmm. Yep. Again. Yeah. Right. So, um, the Milanese. There's a place and a time for the Milanese because it's it's a big stitch. And you don't just want to plop it in, but right. it's a, makes a wonderful stitch if the, the design or the painted canvas calls for it. Mm -hmm. It's nice. Okay, the Milanese pinwheel. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, now the next turned Mary's newest favorite stitch. Mm -hmm. Newest favorite stitch is the what? It's the slide stitch. Okay, and that's it right there. The red. Mm -hmm. When you when um, I took a class from Jill Rigoli, um, and she would walk around and talk to us about suggest th stitches we could use or how we would go about finishing our painted canvas and she came to me and she said Mary I'd like you to do the slide stitch and it's in a Carol Lake Michael Boren book so I went to the page and I said to the person next to me the slide stitch oh my word it diagrams so uninteresting but I thought <laughs> Is that a good word? I think it is, yes. Uh -huh. But I said to my friend, oh, well, I've paid the money and I need to try it. Well, by the time Jill went around and talked to the other students and came back to me, it became one of my favorite stitches. Mm. And That looks complicated. No, it isn't. No? no, it isn't complicated in the least. Okay. And you just follow the design. You follow the little numbers. I don't even know if it's numbered, but you follow them and you're good to go. But doesn't it make a nice textured stitch? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know that I've seen the slide stitch until okay. just now, so this mm -hmm. is very exciting for me. Well, I'm looking forward to using it again. It's not going to be something that you can use in every painted canvas or in every design because I don't know, it looks like it might cover about seven threads. I've done uh, pieces that I've concentrated on stitches over three, over five, over four, but I just have not been able to use this again. Now it looks like, hard for me to see here, it looks like that you have these, you have these diagonal stripes mm -hmm. and then you have something in between. A stitch in between? You have a little tent stitch. Well, it's a little tent a stitch. A little tent okay. stitch. And then, Gary, you do on the diagonal, I believe it's one stitch, uh, one over and three up. One over, three, okay. Or three or one, and it makes that kind of unusual. It's not a true diagonal, but it looks like a true diagonal because each step is the same. Right. Now, is this, when you're stitching it, is this one where you could work in two colors you could that would be very interesting okay. you could that's like I've never pole you uh -huh. could get. I've okay. never thought of that but sure you could that's do that's why I'm here Mary to help you think you know <laughs> well I'm glad you visited me today <laughs> it was come any time and visit um, but anyway yeah you could do this and then do the little tent stitch yeah. or reverse tent depending again we don't always have to do the tent from lower left to upper right, right anymore right. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, when mm -hmm. I see possibilities there, dropping mm -hmm. in a crinic or, you know, in this one, just go white and you got a barber pole. That's but, right. Yeah. That's right. Okay. But it was to me just the perfect um, binding for this quilt. Yeah. So it's, that's uh, like I said, I'm going to use it again, and I'm going to tell you, you'll be the first to know that I've used it again. Okay, I'll look forward to that. Okay, and I will do that. <laughs> but I, I just love uh, the look that it gives. Slide stitch. Slide right. stitch. Okay. All right, now the next stitch, we're done with diagonals, so we're going to go to straight stitch, and we're only going to look at one straight stitch in your 10 favorite, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's bar jello. Bar jello. 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 Bar jello. <laughs> that's good, Gary. Jello shot. Bar jello <laughs> shot tequila, right? That's right. So, no? okay, I'll work on it. You bar, work on it. Jello, jello. There'll be a test probably next weekend, yeah, so fail. there'll be a week to, for you to practice. All right, so this is, this is an Easter, it's a gigantic thing. Mm-hmm. It is. Um, I chose um, an over-dyed thread of uh, watercolors that's called Easter Egg. Mm -hmm. 
and then I took some silk and ivory and pulled some colors out of it, some of the plain colors. And Which one is the Easter egg? That's a good tie-in, though, to do an Easter egg. And yeah. then use Easter see, egg now look at Gary. Yeah. Look where this is going. Can you see here oh, that yeah. it's changing colors? Yep. It goes all the way. It goes from the pinks to the greens. Yep, I see that. To that's the yellows. That's our Easter egg. Huh? And when we do, Bargello is a straight stitch. It's usually over four. It can be over two and over six. But this one happens to be over four. And Bargello is so much fun. Um, years ago, people used to make uh, their dining room chair cushions in Bargello. Uh, and then, you know, people would sit on them. But it wears pretty well. Now, right here where my the pointer is, do you see how that became my first that row? Was, that was Mary's subtle way of saying move the camera. <laughs> the, the camera. This was my first row. Okay, so you put that in, mm -hmm. in the middle. I put it in the middle. And then that, mm -hmm. that establishes your pattern. Exactly. And then it's like, it's like duck soup or falling off a log because every other stitch under that first one is over four. And you see here we have some twos, two, three, three, two, one, one, one. And that makes, this is called line bargello. Okay. And then it becomes so easy. Once we had the pattern for the egg, of course there's compensation at the right. bottom. Yeah, you got to monkey around a little mm -hmm. bit on the edges. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. It's not hard yeah. to do. But I always tell myself and my students to do a full roll first and get that established. So by a full row, clear across the space. All the way, All the across, way across from here. Because then you, we count down four, and it's usually a progression of two threads okay. down or two threads up. Oh, okay. Now, when I uh, went to do the top half of the egg, I reversed my canvas and had the top at the bottom. Oh, there's a trick. There it is. So I would put this row in that I'm going across here, and I always like to come up in a clean hole, yeah. an unused hole, go down in a dirty or used hole. It's very important. Right. If you come up in a dirty hole, um, even if you're not laying threads, you can pull that thread up a little bit. Right. And we don't want to do that if we can help it. But that's a, good, that's a good trick then to turn the canvas so then you're basically stitching the same thing again. Exactly. So you don't have to think about it. And it's easy to keep that pattern of coming up from the bottom and going down in the stitched hole. Exactly. So that's what I did. And then, of course, I put that in, in the, um, you know, in the, Good at the tip, end. Mary. You should teach classes or something. You know what? I'm going to look, that I'm gonna look into that, yeah, try that Gary. Someday, yeah. I will do that. Yeah. So I thought that was just a nice <laughs> Easter egg. You're very funny, yeah. Gary. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. So that's the Easter egg one. Right. Then I wanted to share with you and your audience how Bargello can be used in you oh, know, no, in a pattern. One. Do this you like one. this Tell one? Tell me this one here. This is Try a Different Stitch okay. by Frida's Fancy. This is Try a Different Stitch number one. And Gary, guess what? There are four. There are four. Four of these. They're at the, the shop in Crystal at the, Lake. At the, at the Welcome Stitchery mm -hmm. shop in Crystal Lake, Illinois. Mm -hmm. Blah, blah, blah. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. And this is not that big a piece. What is that? Uh, it's on Congress eight, cloth. Eight, eight inch on Congress cloth. It's on Congress cloth. Oh, that's a beautiful little thing. Isn't that pretty? And yeah. this one had a lot of opportunities for classes, which we're not going to go into these other ones today because right. they didn't make the top 10 list. Oh. Oh, they're like also rams then. Well, another time maybe. But, <laughs> but now, now here, now here's an example because mm -hmm. Bar Bargello. Go, oh, you got it. There we go. See, I'm going to pass that test. Mm -hmm. That's normally that your base stitch in a piece, right? It is. Whereas yeah. this one, it complements yeah. the piece. Yes. We started with our wing class. We started with this piece. We went along the top with our dark blue. Not everybody did it in blue. We had some beautiful color combinations. We came down here and did the lower part and then it was very easy to fill in the lighter blues now as you might you you have a good mind and you might say to me mary there's going to be a time that we have to go come up in a dirty hole and go down in a yes. dirty hole and that's okay yeah. that happens that certainly happens i would not do it this 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 i like to get that base set yeah. set in yeah. so then the lighter colors just came to be but isn't that a nice piece oh, i really like that 
Mm -hmm. You know, and that whole thing, up in a clean, down in a dirty hole, yeah, it's a good guideline, mm -hmm. but you're, you're right. A lot of times it just doesn't make a sense or it mm -hmm. isn't possible. Well, and my, well, students, like my students really will say to me, oh, I've got trouble. I'm going to have to come up in a yeah. dirty hole. And we talk about it. Okay. They get so ingrained with come up in a clean hole, go down in yeah. a dirty hole. And the beads in here are a nice touch. They are a nice yeah. touch. We aren't going to talk about beads today, but we I do like beads. We, we should someday we'll do it. Your 10 favorite beads. I could do that. <laughs> I could do that. Now, I want to show you this also. Oh, this this is here. called yeah. intarsia. And I taught it also at Welcome Stitchery. I usually don't choose these colors, but I wanted to share it today because we have the line bargello. We have some going vertically, some going horizontally. Look at those. Mm -hmm. And look up here. We have the flame bargello. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see that if you pull back, you can see that flame, mm -hmm. why, where it gets its name. Now, th now this is where Bargello, is, that's all, essentially all this piece is, but also this is where now it gets to be a little challenging because you got to pay attention. This is kind of challenging. This is. This was kind of challenging. And you asked me once if I manipulated my threads. <laughs> Gary, on this one I did. I wanted yeah. some purple on each side. Yeah. Um, I used a water lily and you can kind of see here right in here it's going to change color here um, it's there's not as much changing on this one there's a change on there i chose my water lily and then i went ahead and chose some silks of that were in the water lilies okay the the so yellow that was your the, base color my then. base color yeah. there's one that i that has the that's over dyed right there but i usually don't use these colors but it's kind of a fun piece right. for that, me to you know, do and, and now that's something if you're choosing colors it seems to be the normal thing is to choose the the over dyed mm -hmm. uh, variegated thread and then play off of that with your other solid colors you need yeah. you ha absolutely have to do that there are so many wonderful threads out now that you can find threads whether it be in silk or cotton or right. Um, or a blend. I love silk and wool blends. Mm -hmm. um, there's wools, which we, when I first started needle pointing in the 70s, all we used were wools. And mm -hmm. now I don't know the last time I used a wool. Yeah. Which yeah. makes it so different. Yeah. Now, I also today brought, I wanted to show, share, uh, this is called Jeannie's Windmill. And it's got Bargello. Oh, we did. This was a, a, a Fox Needlepoint mm -hmm. Guild mm -hmm. project. This was a Fox. And look at what happens. It's mitered here at the corner. Yes. At the, I mean, not the corner, but the middle. Right. And look at these are horizontal and these are vertical. Mm -hmm. Yep. So this is uh, how the Bargello plays a big part in this piece, but it's not the entire piece. Right. And you have this in a box here. I did have it in a box. I just, that box to me, it just called out right. to me and called out for this pattern. Yeah. Right. Now, this, the, another piece that I just finished teaching at Welcome Stitchery. Oh, and I like this one. This, this is, is a neat one. This yes. is called September Morn by Carolyn Mitchell. Look at right here where the miter is. And yeah. it needed to be a clear, clean miter. But I enlarged it for the gals and uh, col did some color coding for them because this was hard for them to get started. Mm -hmm. But you can see here how we had to do the first one first, the first complete one, get to the miter, and whereas these are vertical, these are the horizontal ones. Right. But this was, there was a lot in this piece. There is a great deal of learning in this small, yes. very small piece. Yes. And the frame is in. It, they're waiting to, for me to bring it back so they can pop it in the, use Ooh, the mat. this isn't framed. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not a pip. Right. It's not yeah. a piece in progress. I'm completely done with it. Our framer uh, has already laced it in the back. And we're gonna, you're going to be seeing this piece again. Yeah. That's really neat. Yeah, there's a lot going on in this mm -hmm. little, what is it? Six or eight inch? Mm -hmm. I think we, uh -huh. yes, that's all it is. This is Fiesta, one of the old, old, I think it's number 10, one of the old, old watercolors. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. oh, and for people who haven't seen lacing ever and wonder what people are talking about when it comes to lacing, that's what that is. Mm -hmm. That's how that looks, lace. Pulls it all even. And pulls it even and it doesn't come apart. Right. You know, we all know we it, we in Northern Illinois live in a very humid area. Right. So if that's not done, it's going to, 
have some gapiosis in it, and who wants that? Gapiosis. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. like that? Yeah. I mean, who wants gapiosis? Yeah, it sounds like it takes a disease. Treatment. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I, I have. So there's yeah. There's so there's what lacing looks like mm -hmm. for those who wonder. All right, now mm -hmm. you got any pillows? Yes, we have a pillow, and there's four-way bargello. Four, four, of course, there's four. Four-way four bargello, and look at how the middle and each quadrant is the same. This is an old, old pillow that I stitched when watercolors first came out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was just so enamored with watercolors. And it came out, and of course, I chose a watercolor, and then I went ahead again, and I know those are silks probably in there. And this is... Now this this one here, you would not want to have had any jello shots no, you stitch this. No, this no, no. This takes some paying mm -hmm. attention here. It does. It does, but isn't it, I mean, isn't it just Beautiful. neat? Yeah. It's just neat. Now this one right. is one of my favorite four-way Bargellos. It's done yeah. all in silks. And you can see again that each quadrant is yep. the same. There's eight-way Bargello and there's 12-way Bargello too. So there's, um, it opens up a whole new world. And you can see how the middle is and you of course can see that there is the nice basket weave right. to let the bar well, That's what I was zooming in for because mm -hmm. yeah, that that gives that uh, separates those quadrants mm -hmm. and let your quiet. eye kind of yep. rest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then up here too, yes. Mm -hmm. So Gary, this I have a lot of nice straight stitches that I use. I probably prefer diagonal more because of the fact that the coverage right. is better. But I, I do use straight stitches. And another time, um, you know, I can share with you some straight stitches. But today, I do like Bargello. Yep. So that came All to right. the my top ten. Okay. All right, now, coming up next is box stitches. Mm -hmm. Box stitches. All right. And these are stitches, Gary, that make a box. Well, that now there. Isn't See that how that worked together? <laughs> yes. It's like a revelation. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so what I did, one of my 10 favorite stitches, is the scotch stitch. Okay. And the reason I chose it is because it's so versatile. Right here on this aquamarine, we see the scotch stitch right there. It's, a, it's over one, over two, over three, over two, over one, and it makes, hence, a box. There we have it. And you see these are just regular box, regular scotch stitches done in two colors. Mm -hmm. Now that's the basic scotch stitch. We see some up here too. It can be a giant scotch which is over one, over two, over three, over four, three, two, one. And of course this is done with the over dyed. Kind of make like a little checkerboard there. So we um, we use the scotch stitch in I bet ev almost every piece that we do. Um, designers and um, stitchers like to use it as kind of a fill-in stitch. So you can see that we've got several. They're probably yes, different, and, and it's interesting in this piece mm -hmm. in particular. And look at this one. That there's so many of them, yet it looks different. They do time. because now look at down here on the lower left, Gary. It's an alternating scotch, it re or reverse scotch. Yes. See, it goes it goes from. The one is in the upper left, and then over here, the little one is on the upper right. So we'll see some more of those, yeah, too. You almost get a circle effect in the mm -hmm. center, which mm -hmm. is interesting. You can. From straight lines. Yes, stitches, you, you can. You get that circle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. look at that. Those okay. are very interesting. Now, in this stitch, <clears throat> in this piece, try uh, have a heart. The whole heart is done in the scotch stitch. It's a big scotch. It's over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six, mm -hmm. five, four, three, two, one. And, but it is a scotch stitch. And it is um, done in over dies. There's like three, probably four different over dies in here. Right. And then, of course, the background is all done in different stitches. Right. But I wanted to show the heart that the whole heart is done in the scotch yep. stitch. And you get some interesting optical things happening mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as you work your way because through. Because, look, at this is the same. This one right here is the same thread, but look what happens right. when it goes in a reverse direction. It, it looks, uh -huh, it reflects the light differently. 
Yeah, the, the main design piece of cake on this thing is the background you got to work mm -hmm. on. Holy smokes, mm -hmm. you earned that thing. Right, that was great. That yeah, love, good piece. just love all the different stitches. But look I, how that look how that light plays off of all those. Mm -hmm. It's really mm -hmm. neat. Okay. Right. Correct. All right. This is a piece called Summer Celebration, and I just want to show you and everyone how. Look at this scotch stitch here. Look at that. Look what happens with the scotch stitch mm -hmm. when we change colors. Yep. And it's all going in the same direction. It yes. does not reverse. So <laughs> this is a true scotch stitch, but um, Nancy Cucci designed it to, you know, make this uh, this red, white, and blue and how mm -hmm. she changed the colors in there. So basically with the, the scotch stitch, it's, it's really a, a versatile it's, stitch. It's, it's, really. it's really versatile. And because I want to show you this next stitch now, or this... I want people to see this. Oh, good, yes. This is, oh, this is a wonderful, wonderful piece. Because there's a lot of these box designs that people are doing these days. And this one, uh, for me, is, is really kind of a standout. It's mm -hmm. really, a, lot of, a lot of creative things in it. I have a lot of red, white, and blue in my family room, and this one lives in there, so I uh, look at it often. There you go, Vanna. If you can ever break away from making X's, try this one for your little <laughs> Patriot room. There we go. Okay. Next. All right. Now the next one. Um, this we're going to visit revisit September morn. Okay. But look at the Scotch stitch here. What happened? We did a Scotch stitch with silk, and then I took one strand of another color silk and went over it. Okay. And and look at the look at the look it gets. Yep. I mean it the the over one looks like a zigzag. Mhm. Mm but look at how it just um you know just adds a little dimension yep. instead of just the scotch stitch. Right. Yeah, we pull we'll pull back here so people can see. Yeah, it adds that little extra flavor. Mhm. Mm yeah. Mhm. Mm and as you zoom in, you can see how I just went over with one thread. Yep from this Carolyn Mitchell design. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Now, on this little tree, I this is, again, more versata versatility with the scotch stitch. Look at the red down at the bottom. There's a scotch stitch. I also don't think you can use versatility, but that's all right. You know, we're making up words here. so I like yeah. it. Let's continue. Let's, doing Let's go on. So we have 3D, what was that? <laughs> uh, never mind. Dimensionality. Dimension <laughs> yeah, that. And now we have versatility. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Yeah. But see how versatile this is? This is called a scotch chakur. Chakur. Bless you. What? <laughs> See, look at there's the scotch stitch, and look what happened with the crinic. It's yep. nine little tent basket weave stitches, mm -hmm. but it's a scotch stitch, and look at how it, the texture just comes forth right. by putting that little basket weave under it. Now, so okay, now when you stitch this, you do the basket weave first, or do you do the? I do the scotch stitches scotch first. first. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then mm -hmm. fill. Then I fill. Okay, mm -hmm. exactly right. So I just thought that was another way of doing it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then this this one is kind of um, this this little mm -hmm. mitten. Look at that one. That's done with flare, and crinic in the Scotch stitch. Oh yeah. I'm gonna show the whole mitten here. Okay. And then that's flare and crinic. Yes in diagonal rows and it's it's not reversed it's not a reverse scotch yep. it's mm -hmm. just a plain old scotch okay and on this one back I to our barn back this to barn. the this, this barn is carrying the day for us <laughs> that in motif madness yeah. look at all the way i did scotch stitches here i did um some some scotch stitches this whole quilt is a scotch stitch but i did the scotch and then i went over it again with several ply of the oh, same okay. color. Wait, wait back. So, so in, interesting, most of these are charted pieces, but this is a painted canvas. This is a painted canvas, and I see. should let you know well, what's painted that's quite too. Alright, but now, now talk about that. That's, mm -hmm. so you took, you did a scotch stitch, mm -hmm. and then what'd you do? I took the same ply that I used, whereas on September morn, I just took one ply of silk mm -hmm. and went over. This I took probably three ply of silk. Okay. And went and you over just it. Crossed, crossed perpendicular to the to my ones. To I the, came yeah. up mm -hmm, 
I just reversed it and went over it. I did that for the whole thing. That's the whole quilt. Because mm -hmm. that really changes the look again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So I just needed again to show you the 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 way that it is so versatile. Right. <laughs> yeah. We could call that perpendicularity. That's oh I like it. Huh? Oh we're huh? gonna we should start a dictionary yeah, maybe. Let's, let's go for quick. it. Let's yep. go. Perpendicularity, right. I think, right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, this is a little name tag that I have, and I just uh, this is the scotch stitch, but look what happened. We started it in turquoise, and then we used an over there we, we used an over dyed and then went on down to the pinks well, with I all see. in the scotch stitch. Mm -hmm. So that's just a different way that it can be done. Sometimes, Gary, I've seen the scotch stitch. Instead of going one, two, three, four, three, two, one, it's gone two, three, four, three, two. And when you leave the ones out of all of the scotches, you can do a little cross stitch in okay. there with metallic. So I mean there you you just can go forever with the scotch stitch mm -hmm. and its variations. But yeah, now there look how you did that with the thread. Mm-hmm. And brought it on down. Mm-hmm. M A R. Yep, you spelled it right. Okay, we're good. <laughs> now moving on, we're going to talk about cross type stitches. Not cross stitches, but cross cross crosses. yes. They're in they are in the you make an category. X. You make an X, but you <laughs> even do more than that. Oh my. I didn't oh. I did not take cross stitches as one of my stitches, but Smyrna fits in the cross stitch okay. realm. It fits in the category because the whole outline of Mary Bell's is done with Smyrna's. Oh, yeah. It's with an over dyed um, thread works, mm -hmm. but you can see here how you start down here, you start here, and you just keep making all these little Smyrna's. Um, it's a nice stitch. It adds a little bit of texture to the pieces, and um, it fits in well. This happens to be an over two Smyrna. It can mm -hmm. be over four, whatever you want it to be. But that is um, that hit the hit the top ten of my list. Okay, but that's interesting. Uh, it, just the tiny little things give us that outline mm -hmm. for the tree. Right. The bell. The tree. It's a bell. It's bell. Mary Bells by Curdy Biggs. Oh, Mary Bells. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, Mary Bells. That's why that looks so familiar to me. Curdy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Curdy Biggs. Now, some of my students in class make this uh, straight over here, and then they are able to make a tree. Oh, okay. Um, I chose to make a bell because Mary has a lot of trees. Yes, you are a tree <laughs> addict. That's right. So. That's right. Mm -hmm. So functioning, mine <laughs> functioning bell too. It's very exciting. So mine is mine is a bell. So that that's just that hit my top ten. Yes. The Smyrna, and then <clears throat> on this next little tree that you have that you're going to bring over and highlight, Gary, the white here. here I'm show the whole tree. Okay. Here. Okay. The whole tree in holder. There we go. This is an elongated Smyrna. Bless See, you. Look at that. Look at the white here. Uh -huh. You see, you make a long cross stitch, and then. Um, make your uh, horizontal and end up with your diagonal. I mean, not your diagonal, but your vertical yeah. stitch. And look at what you can do you there in a short, yeah. uh -huh, in, a, in a just a very skinny little area on a piece. So there can be all different kinds of Smyrna's. Uh, yeah, where, where a lot of times you would just do your basic tent stitch in here to create a line. Oh, no, no, we this, have to. This, gives, this mm -hmm. gives more life to the line. Right, right. The division uh -huh. all the way around, yes. Mm -hmm. Right. No, I, whenever I can, can do something, I mean, I, as I told you, I like the basket weave, but anytime we can put a little, uh, little glitz, a little uh, dimension in there mm -hmm. and have it work, then that's very good. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. The last one we're going to look at for the Smyrna is our good old friend. You're going to feel like you know this piece. Is, well, I'm getting the chart. It's is, already over. It's been decided. It's been decided. It's Motif mm. Madness. And look at look what we had to outline all of our sections with. Oh, yeah. Is the Smyrna. And she had us making them almost till the cows came home. It's a little farming Yeah, yeah. I got phrase. picked up on that farm thing mm -hmm. you did there, yeah. Mm -hmm. But see, that's, you know, that gives, that gives a, a, a nice flavor to the dividing lines mm -hmm. all the way around. Just enough, don't yeah. you think? Uh -huh. Right. 
and we did it with uh, probably I, we did it with a pearl cotton, which mm -hmm. is a lovely a lovely thread. However, when we use our pearl cotton, we have to know that it does bruise, and so we don't use long lengths of it. But my students got pretty tired of the Smyrna, but um, they were glad when it was done, and then when they'd come to class, they could of course fill in each. Right. each section as yeah. we met. Yeah, you, you want a little something in a piece like this, but you don't want to compete with all those complex, mm -hmm. big showy mm -hmm. stitches, yeah. Right, and they sure are in here. This looks like it was done by a designer who has a clue to what she's doing. She does. Yeah. Yes, she does, yes, this looks she like does, uh-huh, yeah. right. So that kind of finish wraps up our Smyrna. We could talk for another hour on the Smyrna, but these were- No, I don't want to. You don't? Are you tired <laughs> of the Smyrna? <laughs> okay. All right, now we're on to what is going to be our next one? The next stitch that we're, my next favorite is the roads. The roads, but first we're just going to ogle Tropical Punch. Not quite finished. She's working on it. Thread's coming in, <laughs> but we're just going to ogle Tropical Punch. Debbie Raleigh, for those who don't know, uh, one of my favorites. I have the chart. Actually, mm -hmm. I have the threads, too. Do you? Well, you yeah. could get started tonight. Tonight I could. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Right. Yes. But I just think this is just one of the most striking pieces on the, and, and just using the can, really just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. So much. Okay, and so. And the stitch I'm that done, we're think. featuring today, Gary, will be the road stitches. Road stitch. The road stitch is another, it's another cross stitch, and it, it just gives so much dimension to a piece and height, but I, you can see here, I'm sure you all know that these are done with neon rays, which of course we have to be very careful with because of the fact that we want them to lay very flat. Here we have a little section of our baby road stitches. They can be done in um, any size uh, with most any threads, depending on how, uh, you know, if it's strandable. On 18, you can use many threads for the roads. Um, it's very hard to compensate when you use the road stitch. You don't want to do that. Right. Because it's just not going to come out. Every, every one of these um, stitches has a place where it goes and it has to go in that place. Yeah. And key on this is that last stitch yes. going in the same direction on every piece. Mm -hmm. It can be horizontal or vertical, but Mm -hmm. Make sure it goes, the, yeah. And I had students in class come, and as I told them, I told them that they left and they came back and they said we had to do a lot of ripping with our roads. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. And they said that they had turned their canvas for something and then they oh, didn't then turn you, it yeah. back. Yep. So, Gary, you're right about having it um, all go in the same direction. And, and on this, on this tension, critical so you're not splitting the stitches on that mm -hmm. last one over that hump because exactly. you get quite a hump going. Yes, here. you do. Hump is a technical term. That's right, yeah. and I hope you that you can see your your camera's very good, but that is that does create quite a hump that last stitch. Yes. yes. Right. But so much dimension, boy! I tell you, in this piece, you can't hide sloppy stitching at all. No. In this piece, can you? You no. Be you up. can't. And every there are so many stitches in here that are are just so um, so new to a lot of my students and new to the needlepoint world mm -hmm. in probably maybe in the last 20, 30 years that, um, but there's, there's just a great deal to yep. see in this piece. Okay. Okay. Enough now, of that's parts. right. Now in this stitch, um, this little stitch, I just wanted to point out that there, the road stitch go, um, along with the basket weave. Now mm -hmm. we did, I did some Smyrnas in here because I didn't want to do a, a partial road. So I did little Smyrnas um, okay. in there. But that just, just to show you that the dimension that the roads right. can uh -huh. be. All right. Now, and then this one, this has, these are square roads and these are round roads, circular right. roads. Yep. So you can, you know, you can see both of those. Here, let me get, get it in focus. Mm -hmm. There we go. Right. So you've got the square roads, and then you've got the round. Just a little different look. L not, the, not much. Not much. But just a little. No. Mm -mm. No. And another one is, um, this is an aqua. We have two pieces here, Gary, that we're talking about that are both aquamarine. Oh, but look, at these roads are done with flare. 
Now there, there's a challenge there because that flare is so stretchy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So talk the, about doing that. I didn't try a to. A lot of prayer. There, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of patience. <laughs> yes, yes. And um, you just, you can't pull too tightly right, because right. we, as we all know, flare will run. Right. So you just had to be very cautious when you use the flare. There's a smaller, uh, a smaller roads right there. But it's a, to me, it's a wonderful use of flare in a piece. But look at that, yeah, because look at that soft mm -hmm. flow that you get off of that because of the flare. And compared to Tropical Punch, where those roads just popped right, right out, right. that neon rays. Not, there, there's no hump, there's no point. Mm -mm. It's just a soft little raised area. Mm -hmm. But it's look beautiful. at how beautiful it is with the Amadeus and right. Crescents and everything yeah, else. Yeah, it, it softens up all of that. Mm -hmm. That's very nice. Mm -hmm. it's Who's just, the designer on this? This would be a Debbie. You think? Rally. Yep. You think? Yes, I do. But that's, you know, now in here, not using a lot of, of color variation. Mm -hmm. um, but what a nice touch. Mm -hmm. It's No, it's perfect. It's it's a great, great, another great teaching piece. We should get Debbie on a show one time. I bet she'd be fun to talk to. And how many times have you talked to her? Three or four. Okay, I knew at least a couple. Now, my the last road stitch today is this one down here. We keep showing Motif Madness, but look yes. at what's happened with the roads here. This is an elongated roads. Yeah, talk about that now, because that, that a whole different look now. Mm -hmm. Right, yes. And she wanted us to do um, some silk and then also look at the watercolors and look at how mm. much higher it um, is raised. Yes. But Debbie is very good with her directions. Most, all, most of these people are very good. And what she did was she uh, numbered it for us so we were able to fit them in. She has them going vertically and horizontally just to give that special effect. Mm -hmm. We may have only used probably two ply here, but one ply of watercolors right. is going to make it that much look higher. How she, how she had that by bringing that in in the center. Mm -hmm. It gives a little contrast mm -hmm. there. She reversed them here and then had the yep. the deep pink at the bottom and yep. top. So those are just some different roads stitches yeah. that I've used and over the just, years. You know, and, and people don't think. Or don't realize, I don't think, how many different ways you can do the road stitch. That's right. Completely different mm -hmm. impact each time, yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, now the next in the in the never-ending list of 10 Mary's favorite stitches, Jessica. Mm -hmm. The Jessica. I have to say, sometimes irritating, but really a fun stitch. Oh. And, and the effect is just, yeah. For years, we could never make a perfect circle in needlepoint because think about it as you're making your diagonal tents you're going to have some that connect with each other and touch and some that are not going to touch as right. they come around well right. Jean Hilton was the designer or the instigator of this yeah, stitch yeah, instigator we'll instigator that, yeah. and I mean this is this has really created a whole new world in needlepoint right. it is a, it's another cross stitch Mm -hmm. and it makes a perfect circle. Right. This is one of the biggest Jessicas I've ever made and there's something that is the most important thing to remember about the Jessica. <clears throat> when you come, when you're over here on the upper left somewhere and you connect, you share a hole with your very first stitch, your number one stitch, every stitch after that has to go under that stitch. And people who don't do that have a point at the bottom and they don't have a perfect circle. The Jessica's always worked counterclockwise. And that's, you know, that, that little part <clears throat> when you get on that last quadrant is probably where, well, it's certainly where more people get in trouble mm -hmm. than any time. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, yeah, you, you're cooking right along and then all of a sudden you have to change the 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 behavior or it goes all wonky yeah. exactly and i have just pleaded with my students when they get to one when they share with one whatever stitch is over there whether it's you know 47 goes into one or 23 they have to raise their hand and then we talk again about yeah. it mm -hmm. and um they they just refuse in class to count out loud some of them but you hear a lot of counting you know 17 18 you know and then i like to hear that because that's the way they're going to go 
put their stitches into the right hole right. because all of these uh, holes have two stitches in them. Right. But, but I mean, you, you, when you're doing this, though, if, after you do a few of them, you really don't need to even pay attention to the chart. No, it, it, no. It cooks right along mm -hmm. until you get to that last quadrant, and then you, then you need to wake up. And then you yeah. need to, you know, there needs to be a bell go on in your brain <laughs> that you've got to get that done, and you've right. got to have it come into a circle. But flowers, uh, geometric pieces, um, anything circular is just perfect for the Jessica. Um, I try to use the Jessica whenever I can. I told a gal yesterday it, at the shop to use a Jessica, and she, oh, she just got kind of queasy about it. Yeah, no, it's not. I mean, you, you make sure your tension stays. Yes. Because mm -hmm. it, can, it can look sloppy mm -hmm. in a hurry. And of course, but, this uh, is an over-dyed uh, right. Jessica, which is kind of fun. Sure. And then... Um, and I love when, when you get one that big, you, what you, you can do in the middle. You oh, can do something in the middle, you can yeah. do lots of things in the middle. Yeah. Now, on the other okay. side of the um, <clears throat> scale, again, on Tropical Punch, we made many, many very small Jessicas. Yes. And therefore, we didn't put anything in the middle. Mm -hmm. of those Jessica's and these are done with a watercolor so you see they have um, uh, they're colorful Jessica's I had students who did this row and then this row so that they had them all balanced I didn't mm -hmm. feel the need for that no I would I would let that just, <coughs> them. Mm -hmm. just and random. I did but they make neat little buttons when you do that right don't they yeah. oh they're wonderful speaking of buttons that leads me to curios you're welcome yeah, no problem on that transition, yes. <laughs> Curios, people yeah. said to me, because I always, I do work ahead of my students, of course, as I need to. And you in, have to help me with this. One. Okay, I sure will. Curios, people would come to the shop and they'd say, oh, you put little buttons or a little sequence there. Oh, okay. There we go. But look at those little Jessicas. Yeah. Now, those are filled, though. That's interesting. Yes. You know, the uh, uh, Debbie's that was left mm -hmm. open... But now these little tiny things are filled. They're filled. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. It just depends on what the designer wants and what she or he thinks will look nice in the Jessica. And then, and then again, that basket weave giving relief, and again, you have switched angles. Yes, they want, uh-huh. This that. was Kathy Reese, and she did want us to switch. Let me go back to Tropical Punch, Gary. Those were done with one ply of watercolors. These, Jessica's, were done with two ply of water lilies. Oh. Which is the silk companion right, right. to watercolors and wildflowers. So with just two ply of water lilies, we could put we could put something in the center yes. there. Yeah, yeah, because on that other, it filled in to just that yes. little tiny hole. Mm -hmm. yeah. that Very would, nice. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Right. Then um, you can see here, this one has very small Jessica's. And I put, a, I, this is a painted canvas, as you can see. I chose to put a little Shoulder. cross stitch in there. I did these with Pearl 12. Those Jessicas are done with Pearl 12 with just a little cross stitch. Oh, yeah. So there's just a different way of using those. Now, we have only been looking at round Jessicas, but are you aware? Now, is that our Milanese pinwheel and beads there? Are we looking at? Kind of. Kind of like, yeah. Uh -huh, kind of. It's, a, it's, it's kind of like a Milanese. Pardon me for just taking you right off the track. You know what? Here, no, okay. but I, you know what? I can get right back on. Okay. I right. can get right back on the we're track. We're counting on you, though. Uh -huh, but yeah, well, anytime you know I can use beads in anywhere, I yeah. will try to do so. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of a Milanese pinwheel, isn't it? Kind of like, In beads, yeah. uh-huh. See, I'm there, yeah. Oh, you're, you're sharp. Welcome. Oh, You're yeah. sharp oh, yeah. today. I'm really sharp. All now, right. Now, you know, you did you know there's more than just round Jessica's? Well, no, tell me about those. Look, uh, bring September Morn back in here. And this is a Jessica that my students just did. Look at this Jessica. It's an oval Jessica. Look at that, right there. And they had no trouble with it. Again, when we, you know, we got to one, we had, mm -hmm. actually, when we got to one, we were done in this one. So we didn't have to go under yeah, it at all. Yeah. Now. But then, and, and I like, uh, 
when I first saw this, I liked the little thing you hung off the bottom of it. That's a nice touch. The little leaf for yeah, September. Leaf, yeah. mm -hmm. We finished it in September, so I thought September oh, I we should that. finish yeah. that in September morn. Now, as we look at uh, Mary Bell's again, we've got different kinds of Jessicas on here. You see, <clears throat> we have a round Jessica right down here. But look at here, we have diamond Jessicas. Mm -hmm. And we put a bicone in the middle of those. Curdy Biggs likes to use bicones and likes to use a lot of beads and cluster beads. So in her Jessicas, see, she's got bicones in here. Mm -hmm. But she has used diamond bicones. I mean, I'm not diamond Jessicas, too. There are triangular Jessicas. There are books about Jessicas <laughs> and the way that they can be made mm -hmm. now. People have just, you know, it's, it's opened up a whole new world, as I said. Now, the last... I wonder, I wonder how many of those variations stemmed from a mistake. Well, that could be. We're going to talk about that soon. You brought up mistake. Yeah. But before we go to the mistake, I have to show you this last Jessica. It's done with Krynik. Oh, what, another, another tree. What a surprise. Mm -hmm. But look at this. There's a sequin in the middle. of, And then I we used a seed bead, a petite yeah. bead. And we secured the sequin. With the bead, yeah. And then look at, then we used, maybe is purple the best or maybe oh, a different, here, the yeah. green would be there best. I used a petite uh, bead and mm -hmm. secured the green sequin. And then I did a green Jessica with Krynik 8 around it. Okay, so you, you put the sequin down and then stitched the Jessica. Mm -hmm stitched the Jessica mm -hmm. around that because I was going to ask you what you did first. Mm -hmm. I knew you were going to ask and so, so I looked at my it. plans oh, because man. it's been a while since You're I did. Quick one. Well I, I, I know you kind of well so I figured you might be asking me yeah. what I did first. Right. So this the little petite bead secured that mm -hmm. down that and then we just it was fun yeah. just nothing short of fun but isn't that a Need nice a looking yep. tree? Oh yeah. Yeah, if you're if you're into trees, this is a really neat looking tree. And look at the background, Gary. Yeah, I know. There it is mm -hmm. again. Yep, it just keeps surfacing. Yep. Right. So those are different Jessicas and different ways of making them and mm -hmm. uh, different sizes, which I think is kind of important yep. too. All right, number ten. Number ten. Now this this when I learned Walnetto from you. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, so I just ruined the surprise. But anyway, number ten, the Walnetto stitch. What a fun stitch, once you get it figured out. Mm -hmm. Once you get it figured out. And, and this is the Glen Eagle piece, gigantic piece, so we're just gonna go right down there. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that, uh, if people are supposed to do a Walnetto or wanna do one, it's like, oh my word, that it's hard to uh, diagram the Walnetto. Yes. It really is. And that, that's the most difficult part, mm -hmm. is it is. you can't diagram it either. No, it, it doesn't, and of course there it is. Um, it is a mistake stitch. Another stitch was being taught by Jean Hilton that day, and a woman called her over and said, I don't know if I did it right. Well, Jean was in her glory because this became, you know, a new stitch, which right. she named the wall nettle. Right. So it's, um, it's a great stitch to do, but what I find even more interesting is when students are doing it and get the hang of it. Mm -hmm. because talk about a stitch having to be in a certain place and every stitch having to be in its own place. Yep. It has to be. Yep. Um, most people just love it. Um, this was my first Walnetto was right here in right the here. Glen Eagle. Mm -hmm. This piece probably came out prob maybe in the 80s and um, the Fox chapter was formed in 1982 and we did this for a year. Each mem some of the members each took a different uh, square, oh. and we had beautiful colors come <laughs> in. And uh, but that is that is a, um, you know an example of the walnetto. Okay. Um, then this is I believe this might be where you learned the walnetto. It is. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, not mm -hmm. my, This is not my piece, but I do have this. Right. Yes. Marilyn Owen de designed this piece, and um, it has the walnetto, and it's a great little teaching piece because there are other good stitches in there too. Yeah, it's a great little uh, ornament. It really is. It is a yeah. great little ornament. But um, Marilyn had us do four walnettos. I did not put anything in the middle of the walnetto. Um, and um, sometimes people will put something in there 
but um, you know she didn't and I think it's great without anything again we're going to bid goodbye to our motif madness but there we see three walnettos at the very bottom and they are um, one of course is done in the over dyed and then two in I believe these were um, weeks dye works okay um, in here that Debbie had us use but um, they just I mean, look how they're touching and give the design of having them three in a row right is very nice too so um, last but not least yeah and, and it really is once you once you get it it's a fun stitch oh thing. it's yeah. wonderful but you can monkey a little bit figuring it out and then, uh -huh. then it comes together yeah right and then it makes perfect sense it does make yeah. perfect sense and i don't know how this gal in california ever decided because you go under horizontal you take your needle horizontally right. or vertically under some of these arms yep. and it makes the twist in the thread yep. and why she ever would have done that it was <laughs> like a it was just like a genius moment yeah. for her because it makes the thread twist and it just does great things and, to and, it. And once you start doing it, then it holds itself together. It mm -hmm. looks like it's gonna come all apart, but mm -hmm. it really doesn't, no. it holds itself mm -mm. together. It doesn't. And, uh, no, and the last piece I wanted to share today is the Curios again. And it's been a piece that we just finished teaching this year at the shop. A lot of the gals are finishing it. And um, Kathy Reese had us do four walnettos and see she has us do a little it looks like a little double cross in between them get a little more light on this okay here. there we go okay so she had us do four four walnettos uh, uh, touching each other again in between her walnettos she had us use some um, oh okay all right she had us use um, some petite very velvet so you don't see that that opening there okay and of course we did fill in the center I yep. believe it was with a double cross stitch a double cross so those are the four walnettos well, look at how she brought that all four together in the center there mm -hmm. too. that's a nice touch isn't that a nice thing yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so um, the gals most of them just really loved it and as in to reiterate it's more fun to watch people get the hang of it than to right. actually do it although right. it did uh, come up as one of my favorite stitches yes so these are not these are my top 10 in no particular order Okay. What I grouped them in was um, either diagonal, straight, box, or cross. And those were the four categories that we talked about today. And that seemed to be, even though I like lots of stitches, those were the four uh, categories that I guess my 10 favorite stitches come. Okay. All right. Thanks, Mary. That You're welcome. Fun. It All was right. great.